So um, the purpose, like, why do we gerrymander or why, why is gerrymandering a big deal, right, is because you can potentially change the power of the Senate or the House of Representatives. So real life example in Wisconsin, I believe Wisconsin has eight congressional districts. Now, in the last years, the congressional or the population has seen an increase in low income communities, right? So the people, there's a lot more people that are low income now in Wisconsin than the years before. But the districts there have been redrawn so that the low in the people that are low income actually have their voice silenced. And despite this growing population, there's not a lot of representation on their behalf because of this gerrymandering. So we are going to look at a couple of different examples on how we can gerrymander to favor a position or, or go against it. Let's look at this example. We're going to consider this state that has 50 people in it. 30 of them are square and 20 of them are circle. Um, we're just assuming that they will all maybe have all the same political views. Um, different ways that you can categorize these 50 people. Um, but there's 50 people, 30 of them are square, 20 of them are circle. And we want to know if we can draw these five, we can draw five separate districts so that we yield five of these districts being majority square and we don't want any of the districts being majority circle. So you notice that this problem did tell us that there are 10 people in each district. And that's because if we have 50 people, we divide it by the five districts, we get 10 people per district. If there's 10 people per district, and if we want a majority of the district to, let's say, be square, so we want a majority square district, that means we need half of the people plus one. So we need six of the people to be square in order for us to have a majority square district. The same thing would hold true for the majority circle district, that if we have at least six of those people in the district being circle, then we'll have a majority circle district. So I'm going to draw my districts here. And this one works out pretty nicely because if I just break them up like this, I have my five districts and each of those districts are majority square. I have six squares, six squares. So if I break up my district in this way, I basically enhance the vote of the squares and all the circles are ignored. Again, here we are giving power to the squares and we're taking away the power from the circles. And what we call this type of gerrymandering is called cracking. And this is when you spread out your opponents into several districts so that they have very little power in each of them. So because the circles were minority in every district, their voice is not being heard at all. So again, this is what we call cracking and we're giving power in this case to the squares because they're the majority the majority um, in that district. Okay, as another example is same scenario, I have the same state, 30 of them are squares, 20 of them are circles, and we want to know if we can draw five districts again with 10 people each, but this time we want two of them to be majority square and we want three of them to be majority circle. So with the same information, we're going to try to redraw this to, to give us two majority square districts and three majority circle. And again, in order to have a majority, what we need is because since we have 10, we need at least six, at least six circles or six squares to be considered majority blank in that district. So I'm going to play with this, um, with this one. So let me look at the majority majority circle. I'll start with the majority circle. I need at least six circles in my district to be a majority. So the first way that I will draw this is I will take the four circles here. Then I'll take two more over here. So there's my six inside of this purple district. And then I'm going to take four squares. And that is one of my majority circle districts. In the middle, I'm going to take these two circles and 
and I need four more circles to be majority. So now I have six circles and then I just need four, I just need four squares. So again, I drew this really weird, but there are six circles and four squares. So this one is also a majority circle district. Now at the very bottom here, I have, I only need six, but I have a total of seven circle ones. And then I'm gonna throw in these three squares here. Now these first three districts that I drew, these are all majority circle district. All of these districts are majority circle. They have at least six circles in each in each district. And now what I'm going to do here is now just break up my other districts. So if I want majority square, I need at least six in there. But notice there's only one circle left. So no matter how I break this up, I will get a majority, a majority square district. So right here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna cut it off right here. And this is my fourth district. And this bottom one here is my fifth district. And again, these two districts are majority square districts. So we do end up with three majority circle districts and two majority square districts, which is very different than the previous example, right? So same population, we just drew our districts differently to favor a certain group. Now this example that we have, this is actually what we call packing. Now packing is you are gonna place the majority of your opponents into smaller districts so that they can win easily and then, so like we put all the squares here, majority of the squares in the last two districts because we said like, we're gonna give them these districts, they can have it. And then the other ones ended up with majority circles. So they ended up getting um, these circle districts. So we've given the circles more power here. Now, these two examples were nice because we had a small population. We only had 50 people in our state and this drawing was given. So how would we answer the same problem if I didn't have the drawing? Okay. If this drawing was not given and I asked how can we draw five districts so that we have two majority square and three majority circle. So let's do this just with calculations. I have, we said, 50 people and we said in order to be a majority in my five districts, out of the 10 people per district, we need six to be a majority. We need at least six to be in a majority. So if I want three majority circle districts, I need three districts that have a majority, so they have at least six. So I need to know, do I have at least 18 circles? I need 18 circles to at least have majority districts. And if we count, or this was given, we have 20 circles. So yes, it is possible to draw three districts that are majority circle. If we want to look at three majority square districts, we can ask the same thing. Actually, we didn't want three, right? It says we only want two. So if we only want two majority square districts, I need two districts. Each of them need to have at least six squares. So that means I need at least, I need 12 squares in order to be able to pull this off. And if again, this was given, but I do have 30 squares, so I'm good. Yes, I am able to draw this. And I didn't actually have to play with the, with the drawing that was given. Just with the math, I know that it is possible to do so. Now we do encounter some real life examples of some districts. So this North Carolina district, we'll see is similar to that first one we drew from Massachusetts that like they just, scattered this this really weird long line around here. Then notice that if we look at the perimeter, the perimeter here is really big. In Maryland, if you look at this um, this district here, you can see that they're like purposely avoiding, they're purposely avoiding this area. And it's probably right because it that area does not vote for a certain outcome that they want. Same thing in Pennsylvania, they're avoiding this. 